For the 2023 Formula One season, this is how every race day has played out. It starts with David Croft's trademark, it's lights out, and away we go. No matter what happened in the 305 kilometers between that and the last lap, it ended with Crofty saying, Max Verstappen wins the Grand Prix. Four months, ten races. Max Verstappen on the top step of the podium. It was a glorious, record-breaking streak, but just like all good things inevitably end, all streaks break at some point. And that point for Verstappen was the Singapore Grand Prix. Red Bull's unprecedented winning streak of 15 races ended at the Marina Bay Street circuit, after a double Q2 exit in qualifying which Verstappen and Sergio Perez could not overcome, as Carlos Sainz claimed victory for Ferrari on Sunday. Starting 11th, Verstappen eventually came home 5th while Perez made it up to 8th from 13th on the grid. Returning to Singapore was always going to be tricky for Red Bull. After Checo's heroics last year, Red Bull could have only hoped for a repeat. In 1988, McLaren, as a team, won 11 races in a row. While Red Bull surpassed that four races ago, Verstappen had a chance to equal that record in Singapore as a driver. The RB19 is, without a doubt, the fastest car on the grid. But even the most dominant car has its weaknesses, the Marina Bay circuit's slow and medium speed corners were the RB19's Achilles heel. Gearing up for the weekend, Verstappen already knew it was going to be a tough one. He wouldn't have expected it to be as shocking as it was, though. Having suffered a major blow in qualifying for the Singapore Grand Prix 12 months ago, Max Verstappen surely did not expect to go through an even worse experience this year. At the track where he qualified only eighth last year after having to abort his final run due to a miscalculation by his team, a litany of problems left him 11th on the grid this weekend. And he should be grateful to come away with as much as that, having collected no grid penalties for any of the three infringements he was investigated for, after the checkered flag fell on qualifying. At the end of the qualifying session it started to become clear how much trouble Red Bull were in. As usual, Verstappen did not disguise his growing frustration in his radio exchanges with race engineer Lambiase. For the first time in a long time, Red Bull had to opt for an offset tyre strategy because it wasn't dictating the race. Starting on hard tyres, Red Bull hoped to make ground on a long first stint. Following an early safety car, Verstappen couldn't have done much to avoid losing out to everyone on the conventional tyre strategy. Despite starting in P11, he managed to make quite a few good overtakes. He gave it everything, it just wasn't meant to be. McLaren's record might have been beaten by Red Bull, but Verstappen fell just short. One thing is for certain, though, Verstappen's 10 will go down in history as one of the best runs ever. Speaking to media following the qualifying session, Horner tried to put a brave face on his team's underperformance this weekend, admitting the RB19 has not been a compliant machine in Singapore. Yeah, it's very confusing to have dropped the amount of pace that we have. The car is just not responding to changes, you can hear this understeer, oversteer, braking issues, it's like we haven't managed to get the tyre into the right working window. Usually when you see a gap that big is because the tyre just isn't fundamentally working now. We've tried different things with setup, we've tried different preparations, and it's just not happening. So a lot for us to understand to try and turn around, and it's obviously very tough for us to make good progress from those grid positions tomorrow, but we'll certainly be trying very hard. Horner has clarified that recent technical clampdowns by the FIA were not behind his squad's performance drop. Ahead of the race weekend, there was much talk over the FIA's technical directive clarifications regarding flexible car parts, namely to do with wings and the floor. Red Bull's drop into the F1 pack occurring on the same weekend that the technical directive came into play, raised questions over whether the interventions put the team on the back foot. But Horner said that Red Bull made zero changes to its car for the race weekend. It's all engineering stuff. There are no silver bullets in this business. I know all of you would love to blame the TD, but unfortunately we can't even blame that, because it's not changed a single component on our car. Circuit characteristics are different here, and I think that we haven't optimized the car in the right window to extract the most of the lap. Red Bull is expected to return to form this weekend in Japan, the scene of Verstappen's championship triumph last year. However, Horner is reserved over predicting that Red Bull will easily eliminate the competition at the Suzuka circuit. Let's see if our struggles are circuit-specific. I mean, if Ferrari are first and second in Japan next weekend then we'll see if there's a significant jump. But we've seen form move around so much this year, the one consistent was ourselves. This weekend, we were the one that found ourselves slightly out of shape. Given the RB19's dominance so far this season, 
Many in the paddock had speculated that Red Bull could win every race in 2023, but Horner insists that had never been on the team's mind. We never expected a clean sweep. There were still seven races to go. I've been asked since pretty much Jeddah and to have got through 15 races is beyond our wildest imaginations. For Max to have won 10 in a row is insanity. While statistics apparently don't matter, they are ones that as a team we are incredibly proud of. To have got this far, to have broken a record since 1988 shows just how hard it is to achieve the supremacy that we've achieved this year. It's testimony to everyone doing their part. Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff has labelled Ferrari's victory at the Singapore Grand Prix as a breath of fresh air for Formula One. Science prevailed at the Marina Bay circuit to take the win, crossing the line ahead of Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton. Mercedes challenged Ferrari for the victory using an alternative tyre strategy, but couldn't launch an attack on Sainz in the final laps for the win. On the last lap, George Russell hit the wall while running in third place, allowing Hamilton through for the podium. Although it lost out in the fight for the victory, Wolf believes it's a positive for F1 that someone other than Red Bull was able to win. I think they have been so strong, they have won all races this year. We must not forget we have this outlier here in Singapore which was a difficult track for us in the past in dominant years. I have no doubt that they will be strong for the conventional racetracks. It's a breath of fresh air that we have a different winner, we have a podium without them so you've got to take the small positives in a year of Red Bull dominance. Lewis Hamilton doubts Red Bull have slipped away from F1's pinnacle, despite their poor showing in Singapore. While this race weekend failed to work out for Red Bull, Hamilton said he has a suspicion as to why the leaders weren't on form in Singapore, saying the team have their focus already on 2024. I don't really know why they're off, pace-wise. But I think it's great to see that others have picked up a huge amount of pace. It's great to see that Ferrari have really stepped it up, and I think it's a positive. Probably, if you think about it, they haven't been developing. Obviously, McLaren brought an upgrade here, others are bringing up upgrades. They're working on next year's car so they have less wind tunnel time, so they're probably using some of this year's for next year's, they would have definitely migrated before us. So no, I think it's just one of the things. They're so clear ahead that maybe they're developing their car less and we are still pushing to develop our current one. But time will tell. With the race evolving into a three-team battle between Ferrari, McLaren, and Mercedes, science says it shows what F1 might develop into once Red Bull's advantage is overhauled by their rivals. I wouldn't be surprised if they still win the last few races of the season. I think Singapore gave us the chance and we used it well. But I still think they're gonna be up there for the remainder of this season and they're going to be very difficult to beat. I just think it's great for F1 if Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, Aston Martin, if we were all that two to three tenths quicker every race to challenge them in race pace. The racing this year would be incredible, it would be eight drivers fighting for wins like we saw today with four or five guys out there fighting for a win around a street track. So it just shows the potential F1 has to create an incredible show. But it's true that Red Bull have nailed the car this year and they're doing such an amazing job. They deserve to win everything that they're winning. Obviously, I'm dreaming a bit about what F1 could be if we would all catch up a bit on them in the second half of the season and next year. So, what are your thoughts? Do you think Red Bull will be dominant again in Japan and the rest of the 2023 season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos.